Hi there, I'm Alex and welcome back to Ukes of Alex, the ukulele channel where we try and dive as deep as we can into the ukulele and ukulele culture from around the world and try and answer a few questions and learn as much as we can along the way. Uh, one thing I get asked pretty much every day of my life, regardless of whether I'm at work or home, I get an email from somebody exp asking me to explain tone words and I thought the best thing I could do would be just try and sum it all up in one video and give you the five things you need to know about tone words for ukuleles and then from there perhaps in future videos we can go back and we can kind of cross-examine the things I've said and give you some examples that's my friendly way of saying that there's not really going to be a lot of sound samples in this video today if you want sound samples of different tone words I suggest that you go over to the southern ukulele store channel where I have compared over 280 ukuleles in 175 comparison videos in the past three years and just in the last year alone over 150 different ukuleles so there's plenty of options out there but what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the popular tone words the less popular tone words and help you decide why you would choose one over the other okay tip number one the first thing we need to do when choosing a tone word is we need to choose between classic tone words for the ukulele and contemporary tone words for the ukulele. The classic tone words are koa, obviously, mahogany, obviously, but also going back historically you have monkey puzzle, uh, mango and acacia, derivatives of koa from different parts of the world. And then you have your contemporary tone words, the modern tone words, the most obvious of which being spruce and cedar. And with cedar, you also have uh, variants of cypress words, so cypress, red cypress, yellow cypress, and then uh, red cedar and redwood, different words that do a very modern thing to the ukulele. There are also other contemporary words that have found prominence in the last 30, 40 years in the in the guitar world and moved over to the ute too. So you see many builders using Karina and using Myrtle. Let's go back and start with the classics. The classics, the mahogany sound. The mahogany sound is based on the early Martin ukuleles of the 1920s and 30s. It has a warmer, slightly smoother soul sound. And typically you find the more popular mahogany ukuleles are the soprano size instruments because they channel the, the sweetness and naturally bright sound of the small body and add some kind of maturity to that sound. And then you have koa, as anyone watching this video will probably know that koa and ukuleles go together like peas and carrots. Koa is a another sweet wood. It's a wood that's very, it's very melodic, it's expressive, but it's also quite um, natural sounding. It doesn't over compress. Um, it's not the loudest of tone woods. So what you tend to find is that music sounds quite sleepy on a koa instrument. It's like someone singing a lullaby. So you find koa instruments are popular in all sizes on ukulele because they go so uh, kind of in, they're so intrinsically linked to each other. But koa might not be the best choice for somebody looking to do music that isn't dreamy or sleepy or um, slightly island sounding in origin. And with koa, you have the variation acacia. So acacia is a slightly earthier sounding wood than koa in my experience. It still has a lot of the bubbliness that you expect from koa, but has the traditional kind of laid back, uh, smooth and sweet sound to it. Mango falls in that category as well, although mango is quite a contemporary classic wood. It's somewhere in the middle. So it needs kind of its own category. And mango, as you will know if you've watched this channel regularly, is it's kind of a slightly um, mid-heavy version of koa. So you find that the lower notes gain prominence. So if you strum a chord on a mango uke, which I can't do right now because I bought the wrong uke for the video, but if you strum a ukulele with a mango um, tone wood, you tend to find that the warmer lower notes smooth out in the mix as you play. So very good for strummers, very good for finger pickers that like a wider range of sounds. 
Then you have your contemporary woods, so your spruce and your cedars of this world, uh, the more popular ones to know about. A spruce top is a very reflective, transparent sounding wood. That's why they've been using it on guitars for a hundred years. It projects very, very well. It can be quite bright. You don't get as much natural bass or low mid frequencies from a spruce top as you do from a koa, acacia, mango, the, the classic woods. But what you get is something that is less, um, less colorful and more direct so if you imagine a spruce top ukulele is perfect if you are playing mainly in front of an audience or you are recording and you want each individual note to really cut through in the mix the sound that you get from a mahogany ukulele can sound quite muffled but in a charming way whereas the sound from a spruce top ukulele is just it's more punchy it's more in your face, it's more confident, and it's it's less mature in a good way, if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> it's impossible to toe the line here. Everyone has their own preferences. Uh, like spruce, you have cedar. Cedar instruments are warmer than spruce, so you retain some of the lower mids and I find cedar is a fantastic ukulele if you play a flamenco style, hence why it's used on classical guitar so regularly. If you're somebody who likes to play with a low G like myself, you have the warmth, but also it's quite, quite a direct sounding ukulele. So cedar is a popular tone wood because it's just a very dynamic choice. The downside to using these contemporary woods, the spruce and cedars of this world, is that they don't really hide the flaws in your playing as well as say a mahogany ukulele might or a koa ukulele might. If you're somebody who's quite sloppy or you're a beginner, you know, don't be too hard on yourself, but you'll find that those slightly uh, foul notes, like if you play on the fret, they come through they come through more than if you were to play on a koa ukulele because the koa ukulele naturally wants to wrap what you're playing in cotton wool and present it in a sweet and delicate nature. Okay, number two, strumming versus finger picking. If you're somebody that does a hybrid style of both, then you're gonna find that there are compromises to be made and you may choose one tone wood and just be very happy with it and know what that ukulele is good for and what it's not good for. It's one of the reasons you find so many people develop large collections of instruments. As you become more in tune with how the ukulele is gonna to respond to your playing and as your playing develops, you start to notice those tiny eccentricities between each wood and each instrument, each size. And what you find is that you naturally go in one direction if you're a finger picker and you naturally go in one direction if you're a strummer. For example, if I'm strumming, I pick up a koa instrument or a mango instrument. But when I'm doing my tutorials or I'm working with students or I'm working with um, customers or at a gig, this can sound a bit too it can sound just a, a bit too deliberate. It lacks some of the kind of fluffiness that I want for those notes. So, but if I was to finger pick, the natural attack of that cedar top and the way that those single notes cut through is much more satisfying to my ear. And that's something you need to think about. If you're mainly a finger picker, you may want to look at the more contemporary, more modern wood choices. Um, if you're a strummer, you may prefer to look at the uh, classic options. Uh, either way, you know, you can mix this up. I'm just giving you the general advice and everybody has a, you know, a sound that they like. Um, I guess this video is just there to unpack that for those that are not really sure why they would choose one wood over the other.
number three are you playing for your audience or for yourself because that's a really important thing to understand when choosing a tone wood I find that if I'm playing at home I will play a mango or a koa instrument because when you're sat in the immediate vicinity of these woods you you're the one benefiting from the sound that they make if you've got somebody sat on the sofa next to you sure they're gonna hear it just the same but there is a massive difference between playing an instrument uh, as you lean over it and really enjoying the tiny things that make it special and being somebody sat four or five meters in front of the ukulele listening to it. In my own experience, playing in a band with uh, Phil, my colleague at the Southern Ukulele Store a few years back, I played a mahogany guitar, I played the rhythm, I was very much the backing uh, instrumentalist in that band and he was the lead player. So he had a spruce top guitar and what we found is that his spruce top naturally sat above my mahogany instrument in the mix. That worked really well for us and for our audience because we were typically playing folk clubs. We we're playing to an audience that were four or five meters away from us and sat down and listening. And it gave us a natural um, harmony to how we were performing. The, the woods worked with each other in such a way so that the spruce top sat higher in the mix. The mahogany top sat down at the bottom and gave the whole thing that kind of heartbeat that it needed and it's the same with any kind of tone wood variation. If you play in a group of several other people and you all play koa instruments, you'll probably find that they all sound quite, quite samey. And uh, that's fine if you're playing in a circle, you know, sat in the garden. Um, but if you are playing for an audience, then it may benefit you to look at and try a few different uh, tone woods and buy with your audience in mind rather than yourself. Okay, so on to number four already. And uh, number four is the question that uh, every man asks himself at some point in their life. Does size matter? Size does matter when talking about ukuleles because a soprano ukulele does not give you the same depth and character as a tenor ukulele. And you can play with the different tone wood options out there, but you're not necessarily going to get what you need from them. You don't see many spruce top sopranos. The ones you do tend to have slightly bigger bodies or they are built with a bigger size in mind and then scaled down. A good example of this is the Inui Nui US 200, which is a fantastic spruce and rosewood soprano. Doesn't sound at all like a soprano though, because spruce is not it's not the traditional uh, dark sounding wood that a traditional soprano would have. So be mindful of the history of the ukulele and when, when you're looking at the size of the ukulele and the genre of music you're playing, just, just focus on the size and the tone wood combination. I'll give you a couple of very good pairings. If you're gonna have a soprano, you know, a mahogany soprano is going to make sense. It's going to have that that Martin sound, the original sound. It's going to be what the ear naturally expects a soprano ukulele to sound like based on recordings and 100 years of musical history. If you're looking at a tenor ukulele, you're going to be looking at mahogany or koa for the traditional sound. Obviously, we've discussed contemporary woods as well, but koa and mahogany have uh, a natural warmth and a natural sweetness that benefits from a bigger body. Uh, the koa especially takes away some of the honky nasally frequencies that you get with the tenor size body on the uke because not many people realize this without doing the research but the tenor ukulele wasn't originally designed to be tuned GCEA it was originally tuned to step down and the natural frequency response of that tenor body sounds right. If you tune your ukulele down a tone when you're next playing your tenor, then you'll hear it yourself. There's something natural about it. And by lifting those notes up a uh, two semitones, what you tend to find is that the natural aura of the tone wood and the body don't work quite the same way that you are expecting. Somewhere in the middle, you've got the concert. And honestly, I don't really know what to advise you about a concert. I'm finding in 2021, as I record this, that more customers buy spruce top and cedar top concerts than any other tone wood combination. And I think it's because people who are playing concerts tend to be strumming. They like to be loud. They're playing in a group. And that's just been the natural conclusion and the way that the market in the UK has gone in regards to concert ukes. 
We've completely ignored baritone ukes though, haven't we? And baritone ukuleles, once again, traditionally have been mahogany instruments. They've been like a tiny guitar, but being a mahogany body, they have a natural uh, spike in the lower mid frequencies. If you're tuning to DGBE, they sound infinitely warmer than a guitar. Um, you have to really kind of search for the right guitar to find something that has as much natural sincerity to it as a baritone ukulele. And yeah, that's pretty much summing up for you the, uh, the, the whether size matters and uh, which relationship of tone woods matters uh, with a ukulele. Number five, the other factors. There are always going to be other factors that help you choose the ukulele for you for example back when i started at southern ukulele store in 2009 we sold lots and lots and lots of mahogany instruments but what's happened over the years is that the emer the emerging ukulele players have been using different tone woods and it's become much more common to see people using uh, spruce koa it's normalized these different woods and as a result a lot of people look at a mahogany you can and they just see a brown wood and they're not looking at the tone wood. You have to like how these things look. So consider, you know, maybe a gloss instrument might be a good choice for you, or just try and factor in the sound of the tone wood when making your decision and not necessarily just how the thing looks. I'm not a massive fan of how mahogany looks on a ukulele, but there's no denying that the sound of it works very, very well. Also, koa. Koa comes in every kind of shape, size, and uh, color that you can imagine the the pink stuff the very very light pink koa has traditionally been the most sought after it's the one that the elders of the ukulele luthery world think sounds the best and then what happens is that you get the straight grained koa and then some deluxe curly koa and then you get that really holographic master grade koa but the way that that master grade curly koa sounds compared to that fairly plain looking pink koa they're worlds apart they might as well be different tone woods entirely um, and it's all about altitude and where you know where the tree was on on the hawaiian islands it's all about how high up the tree it was and how volcanic the uh, the vicinity of the wood and the tree were um, master grade koa has a naturally more restrained sound than a pink koa it's not going to be quite as um, percussive uh, master grade curly koa is going to be tighter the the grain is going to be more um, complex and the sound is going to reflect that so the other factors there really do play into um, kind of how you make your decision uh, I think that this is a perfect launching point for a discussion so I'm gonna wrap the video up there and I'm just gonna ask you folks at home watching now if you could leave a comment just let people know what your favorite tone woods are what your experiences are with different tone woods in relation to ukuleles uh, if you have any questions, send me an email, ukeswithalex at gmail.com. I try and reply to every single YouTube comment, uh, so just leave me a comment. And I'd be very, very grateful if you would check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash ukeswithalex. There's a, a link to a PayPal tip jar in the description of this video. And um, please do uh, check back regularly because I'm in the process of filming uh, my first ukulele uh, finger style course that I will be launching towards the end of 2021. Uh, that about wraps it up for one week. Thanks again. Take care.